Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'd like to share with you two recent cases of primary reverse optic capture for the treatment of negative dysphotopsia. Both of these cases are second eyes, and the first eyes of these patients had 20-20 embotropic results. However, they had the classic negative dysphotopsia where there was a dark temporal crescent. And so rather than exchanging those implants, the patients chose to proceed with reverse optic capture of their second eyes, and this did resolve their negative dysphotopsia. So after completing the case, what you want to do is go in with the BSS cannula, and you want to go under the optic, but you want to push BSS during this entire maneuver of prolapsing the optic above the anterior capsular opening. So I'm pushing BSS, making sure the cannula is against the optic the entire time, and then teasing upward and towards me so that I'm able to prolapse that optic. Again, you want to push BSS and tease that optic with the cannula towards you and upward. And so you can see that the optic is definitely uh, captured by the capsular rexus opening. Um, this is very important. You don't want to overinflate the anterior chamber because if you do, that lens will just prolapse right back into the capsular bag. Here, there's a little small fragment. I'm going to withdraw the plunger to hold that piece along the cannula tip, and I'm able to remove that piece. So again, you don't want to overinflate. You can still see, though, that uh, nasally, the optic is captured by the iris, uh, not just captured by the, uh, the capsule. And so um, what I do here is I use the cannula to push the uh, iris uh, peripherally so that it's the cap the iris is no longer under capture and so I'm going to find the edge here and just gently push the peripheral iris in such a way that it's no longer captured by the optic and that worked uh, fairly uh, easily and again as you inflate the eye make sure you don't um, over inflate for these lenses you want to choose a power of 0 plus 0 0.50 to reach an epitromic result so the second case is the same maneuver, BSS, push the entire time, go underneath the optic, make sure you're pushing BSS so you create a dissection space to separate the posterior capsule from the optic. You want to tease that optic towards you and, and push upward as you push BSS simultaneously during the entire uh, maneuver. Again, you want to create that space between the optic and the posterior capsule. In this case, I found an edge where the iris was captured, and I just uh, pulled the cannula along the edge of the iris capture, and it was able to um, release the iris capture. And so you can use a cannula either to push the iris peripherally, or you can find the edge and just swipe it across to um, release the iris capture. Again, you want to make sure you don't uh, over inflate the anterior chamber otherwise the optic will just prolapse back into the bag and um, I, like I said I chose uh, a plus 0 0.50 to get an emetropic result in both of these patients when I shot for that um, they ended up with a very good refractive result um, now in I'm trying to just illustrate how you can verify the optic capture and you can use a Maltzman instrument. This is a Maltzman and through the paracentesis site with a fairly stable chamber you're able to make sure that that uh, nasal optic is captured by the capsule. And alternatively if you want to approach it through the main incision because the chamber can become unstable I recommend using a BSS cannula to push uh, BSS in the eyes gently as you uh, retract the iris with the Maltzman. So again, uh, these are my techniques on how to perform reverse optic capture easily and safely. Um, remember to push BSS when you make the maneuver and use your cannula and your Maltzman. Thank you again for your attention and I hope this was helpful to you.